Bush here in Away From Home married an older man and then ended up in prison on the other side of the world, all before the age of 20. <laughs> so so how, how can any of this be a laughing matter? Well, let's find out as we welcome Billy T award-winning comedian Angela Draven to the cafe. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. So when you describe this, the story, it doesn't sound funny. Um, it's so good I to have you here. <laughs> well, you did. I'm just trying to figure out if that was a nervous laugh or not. Um, but Most how, of them are nervous. How did it all happen? And it's all true. What actually went on? Um, I, I, I attacked my ex-husband and he called the police and then it's, it's, it needs context. Right, but that's why we come along <laughs> yeah. and see the show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. No, but it actually is a legit story. You're not making this up, are you? No. Right. Okay. So, why did you? Was it therapeutic to tell the story through comedy, or was it just no, to get some laughs? No. Um, it was. I, I I was in a job and I was in a meeting with my boss and some other clients. And after that meeting, my boss took me aside and said you're making people feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, you need to get over it because we're losing a lot of client work. <laughs> okay. So I thought stand up was clearly something to help me get over the tension. No. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good um, word, yes. That's one way to get over it. Um, I just wanna ask you, what was it like in prison? I mean, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Was it, was well, I've heard I've heard that it's a bad place. But right, but you, you found it good. So what elements of it did you enjoy? Well, I enjoyed um, the alone time. Right, OK. Because um, I, I found it a bit like a resort. Like I could just, you know, be there for my own well-being. Were you... Did you feel awkward in prison? I think it was the one place I felt accepted. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I also like if if I was getting f fed up with the conversation, I could just go to my cell and sit there. Yeah, quietly. I'd be like, oh, I have to go, and then I just go. Yeah. So do you suffer from a bit of anxiety? A, l a little bit. So <laughs> then, what, how does stand up seek? Because that that would be the thing that I think would make me the most anxious doing stand up. I mean, how do you get through that bit? Um. So I, I mean, I I did it to try and get better. Um, in client meetings um, and then I, I went and did stand up and I realised that the more I talked about my life the more people found it weird and funny so I could end up telling the truth but people would be like she's so surreal it's so good and I'd be like oh All true <laughs> yeah no I didn't say that until last year <laughs> okay so right, okay but, but, but this whole premise though must be awkward for your family and your friends and for your ex have you had any problems telling the stories? Um, yes. Um, which is why I made the show so that they could come and all see it together right. rather than saying the same story to my family. Yeah. And make a bit of money out it's of it. It's very efficient. Yeah. Like if you've got to say something, just make a show. Yeah. <laughs> if, you've ended, if you've ended up in prison at any stage of your life, just do a stand-up show about it. It makes it much easier than having to go through all the phone calls with Nana. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can test it to a wider audience in prison. <laughs> a captive audience. That's how stand-up started, I think. Well, no, and look, and you've gone on to have a great career because you also are the roving reporter on Jono and Ben, which I love. And uh, one of the most memorable clips for me recently was when you went to Shortland Street's 25th birthday and you, you gate-crashed the party to try and change the channel to Jono and Ben. If you haven't seen it, have a look at this. Can I... I think we're going to find him. I got inside! Come in! I found the TV. I found the TV. I think the remote's like, I think the batteries are flat. Brilliant. That was just outrageously good. I mean, how do you find the balls to do that? Just to walk into someone's house or something, a big party, and, and do that? I, I think... Uh, they, John and Ben employed me. They were like, just do your thing. And that, I was like, uh, okay. And they just enjoyed it. So Everyone enjoys it. And in a really awkward way, it's just so great. Oh, no, you're a great addition yeah. to that show. Thank oh, you. Yeah. If not the best one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the inspiration for your next show? 
Oh, I'll just tell you something about that clip. Yes. Um, so I was told to um, change the channels, but I couldn't change it. So we were trying to figure out how to, what else I can do to sabotage it. And there was like a huge cake with the 25th logo on it. And um, someone gave me a knife. And, uh, and there, there was a woman by the cake saying, don't cut the cake. Like just, so I uh, ended up holding a knife at this uh, Shortland Street party, like this is, you know, I already have a history, <laughs> and now and you're right. this party with a knife. knife. So I had to conceal it under my sleeve, and I was just like, so most of that reaction is me being like, if they find a knife on me, I'm in trouble. Oh, Angela, it sounds good. Now, if you want to show, see, yeah. Yeah, if you want to see the encore season of Down the Rabbit Hole tonight through to this Saturday at the Basement Theatre. Go along, get your tickets from iticket.co.nz for details and all the, all the stuff that you need to know. Angela, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Angela. Brilliant. Nice work.